Hello. Hello. Um, <clears throat> today I'll be talking about A Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, most, well, more specifically, the original uh, film. And as I often do, I show like the film, and, you know, like the DVD or Blu-ray. And this one has uh, all the sequels except for Freddy vs. Jason and the remake. I have both of those, but, uh, yeah. Won't really talk about those a whole lot. Um, but basically, um, <clears throat> I've talked about the Friday the 13th franchise. I've talked about Halloween. Not so much the franchise, but the first one. So I thought it was appropriate to talk about uh, another notable horror icon, slasher icon. Freddy Krueger. Now, um, this was a film back in 1984, which came out the same year as Friday the 13th Part 4, um, which was supposed to be the final movie of that franchise, and this would have been the beginning of a whole new franchise. And um, This film was written and directed by Wes Craven, um, and he you know, thought of the idea when he heard about people dying from apparent nightmares. Like, um, you know, they would just have, <clears throat> be so scared, like, I guess they had, like, a heart attack or something, and many were afraid to go to sleep because they had such horrible nightmares, and then many people died. Um, it's quite interesting to hear about that, in a way, this fictional film and character is in somewhat inspired by stories, uh, real stories of people actually dying uh, in their sleep. And, um, yeah. So, the film is about um, people uh, Springwood uh, where basically teenagers uh, get killed one by one, and um, are also um, they're like tormented by someone in a uh, red and green sweater with a fedora and a bladed glove and burnt face. You know, Freddy Krueger, basically, as we all know. <clears throat> but we don't you know that find out until later uh, with a story of what happened with Freddy Krueger, and, um, the main character in the film, played by Heather Langenkamp, um, you know, Nancy Thomas, Thompson, but Thomas, but, um, you know, she and all of her friends are being Again, tormented, but it's really until like she brings out a hat in his in her dream into the real world that things get really weird and bizarre. Um, <clears throat> it's quite it's very fascinating. Um, you know, just the concept alone, um, people getting killed in their dreams, and then if you're able to like, take something out of the, you have a hold of something in the dream world, and then you wake up, you can bring that out of the dream world into the real world, and it's really interesting. Um, John Saxon plays Heather Lankamp's, uh, Nancy Thompson's, uh, her father, uh, he's a cop, um, Johnny Depp is in this movie. I think everybody knows that. Um, you know, this is his first film. He, um, you know, he just, um, he's the boyfriend of Nancy, and um, he, he's, he doesn't seem to understand really what's going on. He's like, the situation's like, you know, you know you're kind of, a bit 
Yeah, no, he's he like he's like one of those. He, like, there's a whole bunch of people who don't truly get this. They don't understand it. Like, even if people share similar dreams or nightmares, it's like, well, it's like, well, look, it's a coincidence, right? Nothing like to worry about. And then people start dying. And it's like the same person going around killing them, and then as we find out. Um, Freddy Krueger, or in this movie, he's Fred Krueger. Um, he went around and he was killing uh, the kids of Springwood. And um, parents obviously hated this. And um, they all killed him by uh, burning him. And he's like, you know, he's in a building and they sure he was um, dead and he died in a boil <laughs> boiler room and where he would just take his victims and just kill them and um, hence why at the very beginning of the movie it's in a boiler room um, you see boilers and all and it's just really creepy um I apologize for my voice. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm fairly, fairly quiet, but I don't know. I don't believe I'm getting sick, but I don't know. Flu season and all, but regardless, um, it's a very good movie. Um, obviously, you know, I like it. I enjoy the series, but. Yeah, when I talk about Friday the Thirteenth quite a bit, uh, that's clearly my favorite franchise. So, regarding Freddy vs. Jason, yeah, it was more in uh, on Jason's side. But Freddy Krueger is really a still a great character, particularly because of uh, Robert England. His performance uh, has always been stellar. He's always done a great job playing the character. Um, and even though Jackie Earl Haley in the remake was really good, Robert England will always be Freddy Krueger. Um, it's just one of those things, like, you know, no matter how many uh, actors may play this character, whoever originated it and did it fantastic off the bat, or later played it, the character multiple times, and just was fantastic, like something, Kane Hodder is the best Jason. Um, you know, there's always debate over that because there's been so many Jason Voorheeses, but, you know, well, whoever the best Jason is can often be debated. Um, Robert England will always be Freddy Krueger. Um, you know, he'll always be the voice. He'll always be the face. It's just, you know, it's really... An incredible performance, and the fact that he played the character for eight films uh, just goes to show how uh, <clears throat> how much he enjoyed the character. But he did step aside for the remake and let someone else take over. And again, Jackie Earl Haley was really good, but with the remake, it's like they tried to make um, him. They had him like be a child molester too, and he kills the kids later on because they told their parents, and then he got killed. And uh, it's, it's that aspect that many didn't like. Um, in one of the later sequels, they might have hinted that he was a child molester, and never really flat out said. He was, and um, there's a lot of reasons, you know, that's, of all the things regarding children in danger in terms of horror films, like murder and stuff, a big taboo is molestation, you just don't do it, for obvious reasons, um, but the people who made the remake wanted to be a bit more, 
ballsy as you could say and just go for broke and try to make this Freddy Krueger just truly despicable and um, yeah well I guess they succeeded um, but still you know it's it's one of those films that's you just really can't top the original Whereas I said before, with uh, like Friday the Thirteenth, um, well, each sequel improved on the original. Uh, I do think the original is the best, and while the sequels do give some interesting um, uh, character development uh, piece by piece with Freddy Krueger, um, Wes Craven's New Nightmare is probably I would say the uh, the best sequel. Um, unless you count Freddy vs. Jason, which I think most people would, as like the uh, eighth installment, just as it's the eleventh installment of the Friday the 13th franchise. Um, yeah, it's just one of those movies that's like, it's just really, it's one of those that's like, you just really can't beat it. Some sequels are very good in the franchise, but, you know, then others are like, mm, I don't know. Not sure if they should have gone there. <laughs> and it did spawn a TV uh, series. Um, Freddy's Nightmares, yeah. And um, on the Blu ray, there's a. Uh, yeah, there's two episodes on here, so. Here you go. If you, I don't know. That's like the only thing for me I can recall. Um, I do have a complete uh, series set for on DVD of this, basically, and um, I can't recall if right off the bat if that had um, the uh, some episodes also or not. But anyway, if you've ever, if you've never seen Freddy's Nightmares, uh, I did when it was like on uh, that Chiller Network. They changed the name. Um, yeah, Chiller Network. Yeah, they aired it, and but then they stopped. And uh, I remember watching that show, and it was quite good, um, quite interesting. It's like an anthology series where each episode was different, but Freddy would come in, uh, introduce, and be like the closing, sort of like kind of I guess like Tales from the Crypt, but you know, uh, sort of formatted in that way. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this film and the franchise it spawned is quite well beloved, and for very, very good reason. Um, it's one of those uh, that will, I believe, will be around for quite some time and will be remembered very fondly, uh, particularly the first film. Um, yeah, I enjoy this movie. Uh, enjoy any of the sequels. It's, an, it's a franchise that's very entertaining. You know, uh, that's another thing. Is like it's like a lot of these franchises that run for a long time. Even if some of the sequels aren't very good, there's enough entertainment value that you can get out of them. So that's always a positive for these films. Um, and uh, really all I have to say um, so I would have talked about the new Halloween film but I haven't seen it and um, at this moment I don't know when I will because um, I'm gonna go with my family and um, just trying to figure out when the best day would be um, I guess my preference would be this weekend, as it wouldn't be as crowded and packed 
it was the opening weekend, but you know, that's just uh, me. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so I'll probably do a video on the new Halloween when I see it. But yeah, uh, I just wanted to kind of touch on another franchise uh, this week. So there you go. Again, I just hope you have a good week, have a good day, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy your uh, Halloween season, uh, if that's your thing, and if not, I just hope you're enjoying October so far. Um, watch what you like, and uh, enjoy life, uh, pretty much. So, with all that said... Uh, Again, I hope you all have a good day and have a good week, and I will see you all next time.